What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode where we're going to talk about the Raccoon Info Stealer and new methods used for hosting command and control servers and other hacker infrastructure. You might remember the episode I did about the T-Bot info stealer being delivered through the legitimate Google Play Store. That Trojan is an extremely efficient and dangerous Trojan that targets over 400 different financial apps to steal your credentials, intercept multi-factor authentication, and more. In case you missed the episode about the T-Bot Trojan and want to watch it, the link is above. In this episode here, we're going to talk specifically about this raccoon info stealer allegedly developed by Russian hackers to steal info from your browser. So this is not about a phone or an app, but instead about your laptop or desktop. I hope you'll watch the full episode, but if not, you can now skip directly to my insights at the end of the episode right from the timeline below. For the rest of you, Let's go through the story together and see what we can learn to protect ourselves and others. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. The Raccoon Info Stealer is a credential stealer that first rose to popularity a couple years ago and is now abusing Telegram for command and control systems. A range of cyber criminals continue to widen its attack surface through creative distribution means like this. Raccoon Stealer, which first appeared on the scene in April 2019, has added the ability to store and update its own actual command and control addresses on Telegram's infrastructure, according to a blog post published by Avast Threat Labs. This gives them a convenient and reliable command center on the platform that they can update on the fly. The malware, believed to be developed and maintained by Russia-affiliated cybercriminals, is at its core a credential stealer, but it's capable of a range of nefarious activity. It can steal not only passwords, but also cookies, saved logins and forms data from browsers, login credentials from email clients and messengers, files from crypto wallets, data from browser plugins and extensions, and arbitrary files based on commands from its command and control server. Congratulations, you're doing a great job by wanting to learn about the Raccoon Info Stealer. I appreciate your support by watching my episode about it. If you're new to my channel and have not already, please consider subscribing to my channel and smashing the bell to be notified when I upload new episodes where I give you insights into the newest, important cybersecurity news stories like this one. With my insights, you can be better prepared to protect your company, your family, and of course yourself against these and other cyber attacks. So hit the subscribe button now and let's continue to learn about this story together. In addition to the features previously mentioned, it's able to download and execute arbitrary files by command from its command and control system. Avast Threat Labs researcher Vladimir Matyanov wrote in the post, this in combination with active development and promotion on underground forums makes Raccoon Info Stealer prevalent and dangerous, he said. Upon its release in 2019, cyber criminals quickly adopted the malware because of its user-friendly malware as a service model, which has given them a quick and easy way to make money by stealing sensitive data. Early on, attackers were seen delivering Raccoon Stealer via an image file hosted on a hacker-controlled Dropbox account in business email compromise campaigns that targeted financial institutions and other organizations. More recently, Avast Threat Labs researchers observed a number of new and creative ways attackers are distributing Raccoon Stealer, Martinov said. Taking into account that Raccoon Stealer is for sale, its distribution techniques are limited only by the imagination of the end buyers. To hijack Telegram for its command and control system, the malware first decrypts main key, which it uses to decrypt Telegram gate URLs and bot ID. The stealer then uses Telegram gate to get to its real command and control system using a string of queries that eventually allow it to use the Telegram infrastructure to store and update actual command and control addresses, Martin Yovro. By downloading and executing arbitrary files from a command from command and control server, the stealer is also able to distribute malware. Avast Threat Labs collected about 185 files with a total file size of 265 megabytes, including downloaders, clipboard crypto stealers, and white black crypt ransomware that were being distributed by Raccoon Stealer. 
Strangely, Avast Threat Labs found that in recent activity, the country where they have blocked the most attempts is Russia, which is interesting because the actors behind the malware don't want to infect computers in Russia or Central Asia, Martin Yov wrote. This could be because the attacks spray and prey, distributing the malware around the world, he noted. The malware doesn't check for the location of the user until it actually reaches a device. If it finds that the device is located in a region developers don't want to target, it just won't run. So what can we learn? Well, this is a relatively standard info stealer in terms of what it can do. It could steal passwords, it could steal cookies, it could steal files, crypto wallet info, and it could execute files or commands it receives from the command and control server, like installing malware or you know ransomware. What makes this info stealer so interesting to me is that the raccoon info stealer is leveraging an existing platform which is meant to do a specific job, a different job, and they are bending it in order to have it perform the job they need. The service they are using is Telegram, but they're not hacking Telegram or breaking it. They're using the original functions as designed that Telegram provides to all users or devs, and they're using it to achieve their own goal. If you think about something like growth hacking, you know, think about the Airbnb story, you know, the Craigslist to rent out people's couches. You can argue that they hacked Craigslist and that other growth hackers are hacking the services they use to grow their business or channel or whatever. Hacking, I mean, is in the term growth hacking, even though you don't necessarily need to hack the uh, software itself. Now, if you can do it, it's pretty ingenious. You're leveraging another business's success to drive your own success by, say, you know, sniping customers for your product from that other service. People do eBay, do Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and tons of other platforms where tens or hundreds of millions of users have registered to use that platform, but they're being sniped or, you know, marketed to from your platform. Now, okay, well, what does growth hacking have to do with the Raccoon Info Stealer? It is a similar concept. These hackers found a way to take a legitimate service and use it as part of their hacker empire or their infrastructure. They are leveraging that other service. They are definitely not the only ones. You know, Google services have been used for many years by hackers to store files or, you know, Google Drive or use Google Apps Script or Microsoft OneDrive or even GitHub. But up until recently, these services have mainly been used to dump or store data, you know, files, payloads, etc. We've now entered into an era where your legitimate service, whether a texting app, an SMS service, or even a blog, that may have an API and it's accessible to customers and developers, now that service is being leveraged by hackers as part of their infrastructure. So what are you going to do? Block Telegram or Instagram or Facebook or the entire internet? Part of the reason these hackers are doing this is that these legitimate services are oftentimes whitelisted or graylisted and not necessarily blocked at, say, firewall levels or mail service levels or browser levels. Another reason why, say, something like Telegram infrastructure would be a good use is the ability to be more dynamic, you know, or do dynamic things like a faster rotation of services or perhaps leveraging the service from different countries. Now, this does depend on how the infrastructure of the legitimate service is built, but it is possible and allows these groups to leverage a company's, say, global infrastructure for their own needs. Lastly, why would a hacker develop a service when they could just leverage yours? It saves them time and resources. They just need to find a way that they can bend your service to their will. So now, in addition to securing your Microsoft SQL Server, your MS Exchange, your QNAP NAS, your firewalls, your routers, and other servers or, or uh, systems, from infiltration by hackers, you also need to look at the services you provide and start to think how a malicious actor could manipulate your legitimate service for their own malicious needs. With that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already and smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Don't forget to ride. Farewell.